I'm here, old school meeting, new school. Introducing Tree Market, Tree Dot Market. And that's uh, from the none and only Daryl community. I have Apollo and the Renaissance, man. How are you guys doing today? Yo, thanks a lot for Yo. having us, Raf. It's good to have you guys. I'm really happy you guys made it. I'm really happy we're here talking about the future. So, long story short, Satoshi Nakamoto gave us a technology that is meant to revolutionize everything. And along the way, many people realized that privacy and anonymity was important. For the vast majority of crypto people were thinking, well, we just need to focus on the money aspect of Bitcoin. But as it so turns out, every aspect of human interaction deserves a P2P free and peaceful environment. How are you guys doing today? We are doing fantastically well. I'm here with Rev. Hello, Rev. Hello. So, yeah, what you say, Raf, is exactly like that. I want to open also for Apollo to say hello here. He's muted now. Hello, world. Hello, um, hello. Uh, what I wanted to say is that, you know, uh, Raf, what you say is exactly accurate. Uh, the point in which we are now, a days, you know, with everything that is happening in the world, CBDCs and other bullshit, uh, now we are having less and less options for privacy. And that has become something paramount for the project right. that we are engaging on. So I was just in uh, San Francisco and the rave there is this new car sharing service, which is not sharing at all, called Waymo. And it's this car that drives itself like a robot and people ask for it like as if it's a Uber or a Lyft and they jump on it and they're really happy because they're paying less. But in reality, when I saw the Waymo's on the city with all of their cameras, well, you know what I saw? I saw a cop. I saw the police. I saw mass surveillance. I saw the technocratic states encroaching upon us in ways that I had never even fathomed possible. So these networks that are private by default are not just a desire of some people in the market. In my opinion, they are a luxury to have in a world that is becoming ever more tyrannical. So thank you guys for what you're doing. How about you guys break down for me and for the audience what Darrow is? What Daryl Daryl is Daryl D E R O the Daryl blockchain. Well, technically, the Daryl blockchain is a layer one uh, application layer or application network. So think Ethereum but private. So what Monero is to Bitcoin, Daryl is to Ethereum. You can run the same application. You have smart contracts, and everything is private by default using homomorphic encryption. This is encryption technology where you can do computation of the data without decrypting it. So everything stays private until you choose to share it. Right on, right. So this is like the Solana private, the private Solana, the private Ethereum. Awesome. Exactly. You could say that. Awesome. Apart from anything that you wanted to add there. <laughs> I'm rocking Beauty. the shirt, guys. I'm all into it, dude. Like this is from a soccer club in South America called Libertad. And they're all fully sponsored by Monero. So, yeah, it's beautiful yeah, because... Alessandro, right? Yeah, Great I see guy. you guys. I see you guys taking the work of the Monero community to the area of smart contracts. So how does Daryl take privacy, smart contracts, the aspect of privacy into the smart contract world within a blockchain? I think that the best one to answer that is Apollo. If you want to unmute yourself, friend. Yeah, well, it's just like you said, you know, Satoshi invented this great technology, but he didn't go all the way. And it's been an evolution and a progress. But here we are now, Darrow, the latest and greatest. We have computation. We have privacy. It's really what Bitcoin should have been, but uh, we have it now. 
Badass, badass, badass. So within all of the, everything that's happening within crypto, a lot of people are realizing that scaling on chain is very important. That having your data interconnected with your peers as fast, efficient as possible, as scalable as possible is important. But what people don't seem to really care for is privacy. And you guys came up with something which in my opinion puts Amazon out of business. Please tell us about tree.market. What is this? Fantastic. Uh, thanks a lot, Raf. I, I will take this one. So um, what we are creating here as, is an unstoppable peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. So we will nice. start small. You know, I, obviously this is done with the infrastructure of data. So this is not only private by default, but it's unstoppable in the sense that we are just providing a good interface for you to operate with your wallet. So everything remains in your power. There is no rug pull uh, ever, you know, achievable in this in this sense. And that, you know, is the whole ethos about the, the platform is exactly that. We are creating open source software that will allow, you know, the new civilization to basically engage in free market activities, trading, right? Dude, that's beautiful. So when you guys showed me this technology in an Arcapulco, the first thing that I noticed was like, this can only be done on a private by, de by default network. This type of, of, of commerce, this type of integration with technology can only be really ex experienced and executed within a network that gives you privacy by default, meaning that I get to share the data that I want and I can enter into business with whom I want in the most private way possible, allowing me to have complete autonomy within the environment of that which, of the value with, that I'm sharing with and selling in the market. Is that correct? Yes, pretty much. We want users to maintain full control over their data. All we do, like Renaissance Man said, is provide you with an interface for the best usability with the Dara blockchain. And through that concept, you keep everything. We don't even know transactions are happening. You can create a catalog of your offerings and services. And from there, you really can trade peer to peer without any intermediaries, not even us. And you guys just launched this week, right? We launched our website this week to talk about the launch of our seed promotion, our seed campaign, excuse me, which is a crowdfunding campaign. So we're pre-selling or pre-offering our digital product with perks and benefits to the platform and the people who help support us get this token, which will grant them a lot of benefits and features moving forward. Okay, great. Let's, let's get into that right there before we have to come back to it later. Explain right. how this works, this whole dynamic that you have, that you have around your ecosystem right now. Yes. So when we were uh, trying to see, to, to understand how to actually develop a platform of these characteristics, you say it, right? Amazon, how many employees they have, right? Hundreds of thousands, I don't know, is a lot. So, you know, with uh, small resources, okay, how we can uh, roll this down and take it to a point in which the community can actually, you know, jump in and continue building in the point that we uh, you know, uh, take this platform too. So what we say is, okay, can we take um, VC fund money? Yes, but, you know, equity <laughs> uh, investors are uh, one of a kind and I dealt uh, with them myself in the past. So that, that was, you know, more like, no, let's try another thing. And we were thinking about doing our own kind of crypto, you know, like, but no, that's super scammy. There have been so many problems lately. So then we uh, evaluated a model that is, you know, very well known today, which is the pre-sale or basically crowdfund the uh, final version of the of the service or the product. So what we did was to come up with uh, the idea of the seed token, which is obviously based on Dero. 
and this seed token is going to be uh, sold in um, three in two different weeks, and we will have uh, price, different price points uh, in the, in that in, the, in those weeks. So the idea is that with this we are going to crowdfund, so we will not depend of any third party. And the people that is uh, getting the tokens are getting with that the ability not only to use it themselves. So you have it in your data wallet, a uh, tree market app automatically sees that and allows you these special benefits that the, the token will bring. And but also you will be able to get this token and rent it so you get it into a smart contract and you can rent it to someone that really makes use of it that would be the high rate of selling accounts so if you have the idea of selling a lot in, in tree market you will probably benefit a lot of this and if you want to rent it to an account that can uh, make use of it you can make a difference obviously and uh, the third point that i would uh, say is very important is to have um the the ability to fractionalize the token so this is you know when you have the token you will get the services but if you need uh, you know just for for example buying some stock you know you you want to just buy some things to sell and you need the money so what you will do instead of the you know just uh, having to exchange the whole seed token for another thing you will be able to uh, do this swap with uh, something that we will call the leaf token and that is a one to 100 um how you call it? Ratio. ratio thank you so with that you know we ensure that you don't have to actually get totally out of this token and you can come back you know buy the the tokens that your the leaf tokens that are needed to come back to 100 and then come back to the seed token again that's awesome where can people find out more about this uh funding that you're running for this project they can go to tree.market and see all the information there. We put out pretty much the points about what we want to focus on and how we want to accomplish this. And from there, you could sign up right now, give your email that we can then notify you as the, the opening of, as Renaissance Man calls it, the open cart on April 7th when we start the seed token campaign. And we will just keep you informed along the way. Okay, right on. So now people know how to get involved if they want to. But now let's talk about the technology itself. What is Tree Market? How does it work? Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Apollo can start talking about what he's doing uh, with the contracts, which is pretty awesome. So I would say, Apollo, if you want. The contracts and also what he's doing with the multiple currencies. Uh, tell them a little bit about how that's all going to operate in the flow state. Sure. So, yeah, what I've been working on is uh, setting up in anticipation for the C token sale. That's going to be like the first product on uh, on Tree Market, which I think is kind of cool. It'll be sort of a demo of the site as you're supporting it. And so, what I've been working on in the background is uh, getting a multiple currency support, um, so you can actually pay in what are all the currencies: Bitcoin, Litecoin, Monero. Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, uh, Tron. I think there's a couple others, but but yeah, I've been I've been setting up um, a a Darrow service along with a, a BitCard instance, and uh, so we're going to be accepting all those currencies, and then once once those payments are are uh, registered in the service that I'm building, uh, the user will automatically be sent the, the seed token. Okay, right on. And these tokens are all running on Darrow itself? So the seed token runs on Darrow. You're going to need a Darrow wallet to hold the okay. seed token because we want to, that to remain private, anonymous. You can transfer it from wallet to wallet and therefore it remains completely obfuscated and encrypted because you can have multiple ring signatures in a transaction and from A to B as well. And that's kind of the benefits. I think what Apollo uh, missed on that one, what I wanted to add there was 
the the flow state of people will be able to donate in one of those nine currencies right now that's the application that people are going to be using when they're trading peer to peer so yep. let's say you wrap are you have your point of trade system with tree market you've uploaded some of your services or your offerings and then you meet someone on the street and you go yeah let's do a swap you can accept up to nine currencies plus you can even close it in fiat the whole point of this is you keep your private ledger and we want people to have the ability to interact in multitude of ways. One of the things that some of the inspiration for this came from is people said, yeah, it's great just Darrow, but what about people who don't have Darrow that want to pay me for my Airbnb or other services? So that got us in the idea of, yeah, we have to make it more interoperable. We have to make sure that the user can accept a multitude of currencies so that this works in the real world, not just for one chain and one community. Awesome. What what other cryptocurrencies can you like buy, sell things with? Well, really, there's no limit, right? Because like you said, you can do cash. Um, so you could do any type of fiat or any type of crypto. Right now, what I've been working on that's like built into the UI or will be built into the UI for the seed token. There's a few there, Bitcoin, Monero, Bitcoin Cash, Tron, Ethereum, Litecoin, some others, but there's no limit because that's the thing. Like the because the payments are really peer to peer, they're not going through a contract. You know, there's no middleman there. You you the user can set whatever currency you want, but your listings will be on a contract, private or public, how you like, and uh, you can also use a contract if you're going to do an escrow. You know, in some sales cases, you want to have an escrow agent. But other than that, it's peer to peer, wallet to wallet. Um, so obviously, Darrow is the best one. But if your if your customers don't use Darrow, you are free to do whatever you want. And we again, we don't know that you're doing it. We don't. We're not in the middle watching. Uh, none of it goes in our hands at any point. So you can do whatever you want. That's awesome. So even if you weren't using Daryl properly, you're using another privacy, uh, another cryptocurrency that is not private. You still get the privacy features of protecting the content of your market. Is is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Consensus so uh, reply. So you're extending. You're extending. Uh, all of the faculties of Daryl, not just uh, within the Daryl community, but extending it beyond to anyone in, in the world that wants to use this in commerce. This is pretty nice. Am, am I correct in this? Yeah, absolutely. The interoperability is a big part of this uh, effort that we are doing. That was from the very beginning, one of the requirements that we have. Here, Red wants to say something. Go on, my friend. And also, <clears throat> excuse me, and also the community at large that needs this is not just in Darrow. So to expect everyone to do a learning curve into Darrow, which does have a bit of proof of work involved, and you do have to register your wallet. So there's steps that are not easy for everyone. If we can make a service that is interoperable, user for use, uh, sorry, easy to use for Grok and Granny. That's what the iPhone was so successful at is anyone was able to pick it up and a one-year-old could figure it out. And that's the kind of concept we want to bring to blockchain, not just Darrow, but all blockchains. It just so happens Darrow has the best technology, 18 second block times, complete privacy if you want it. It's fantastic. So to build on top of that is, like you said, it wasn't possible before, but now it is. Yeah, which is wild and crazy. The entire world of venture capital right now is looking to help networks that need scaling like Ethereum and BTC. And what I find them doing is, is that they're using the, you know, the layer twos, layer twos, right? They're always talking about layer twos. But what I find them using blockchains that they themselves create as the optimal layer twos for their crippled blockchains. So what I, I, I would like to see is for Darrow to say, hey, if that's what you're doing now, if you Ethereum, if you BTC are using other blockchains as layer twos, why don't you use Darrow? Has there been an initiative in Darrow for that? Because Darrow would be, in my opinion, probably one of those bad, those badass layer twos for both Ethereum and BTC. Well, there isn't really a layer two right now in that concept that I've heard of, but you, well, you can- You understand what I'm rent. saying though, right? 
Like I kind of get what you mean. You can actually wrap Darrow your is Ethereum the tokens. Two. Yes, you can wrap your Ethereum tokens in Darrow already. So you could take ETH, USDT, Link, all these other coins that are native and tokens, excuse me, native to Ethereum, put them wrapped into Darrow and then send those around. So you can almost recreate that entire ecosystem using those tokens. So in that sense, it kind of already is there. There's nothing in the sense of a full layer two, like its own chain that takes over and does all the operations, but we don't need that because Darrow already is that. Why would we right. recreate the wheel when we can harness the power of those chains like we want to do and not layer over them? Yeah, absolutely. And we are actually, yes, thinking in a lot of ways to do these um like a feature of the actual application that by the way is going to be running as a web app so you will not need any kind of play store or anything this runs in your brave you know totally private no problem so what what how how sufficient is Daryl right now like how much is a transaction fee on Daryl on the Daryl blockchain right now just to give people an idea of what we're talking about apollo if you want to take this uh the transaction fees are minimal I, I don't know what a dollar amount i never even look at it it's it's tiny it's like a penny right or pennies yeah, it's, it's yeah, so just like to give that, perspective yeah. it's it's something like a uh, hundred something dairy and there's five um five units to darrow so therefore decimals, you five mean? decimals thank you and therefore you're looking at uh, less than a penny right now, so comparable to Monero. Okay, right on. Uh, and the speed, and the speed oh, is amazing. Honestly, that is something out of this world. That is the advantage, right? You don't have to wait for um, 10 blocks to use your Darrow. It's instant syncing. You send it, and within one block, it's there. So maybe two blocks to confirm everything, 36 seconds, and your tokens are ready to use. Your coins are there. You don't have to wait anymore. And that's what kind of makes this a bit more revolutionary. It's the privacy and the speed. Yeah. And you get everything um, in a, an, an easy to use platform, basically. The usability. Yeah. It's good. You will test it. <laughs> so we've seen in, in privacy networks that there is an optional disclosure uh, ability for those people um uh, that want to use tree market is there optional disclosure if they like have a formal business and they need to take care of accounting absolutely so the beautiful thing about darrow is everything is private by default but you can optionally display whatever it is so there you can have transparency you also have private keys and public view keys i believe so you can actually have something like a service where your accountant can have access to certain things but not others and these are things that we've thought of at least you know we've discussed a few times on how we want to even create something on tree market where you can have all your transactions in a nice format for an accountant if you want full disclosure yeah, uh, the, the idea is that, uh, you know, one of the beautiful things that the blockchain is, is a ledger, right? Yes. So why not having a great ledger with a great, uh, you know, user interface to actually can consume, export that information, you know, each one can do whatever they want with that. That's really cool, guys. Has there been any businesses that are have, are using uh, tree, tree market right now? Or is this that new that no one's using it at this point? Like, how, how new are we into into seeing how this technology develops? Well, what I can tell you is that when we were there in Anarcapulco, by the way, thanks a lot for the whole organization of the event. I know that you were involved there, Raf, too. So thanks a lot for making this possible, you know. Actually, we were discussing the other day, uh, Tree Market wouldn't be possible if Anarcapulco wasn't there. Really? So okay. thanks awesome. to... No, no, for sure, because we, you know, we did the the alpha uh, in 20 hours. Like we were there for an Arcapulco. We gathered we, with Apollo. Hey, do you want to do this crazy thing like a hackathon? Yeah, let's go. All right. <laughs> so it was like a full weekend. Really, I mean, I, I really enjoy those things and we all do. 
And you know, after that, uh, actually, I shown you this uh, the the prototype. You know, the the alpha, and the alpha is working now. the The point is that it needs a lot of work. The concept, the proof of concept is there. Now it needs a lot of work to be a, able to do what Amazon do, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if and you want to there. fork it, go to GitHub, start. <laughs> and and that's what I find interesting about, you know, th this this that you guys are, are are part of, because it doesn't seem like anyone knows who started this, but it's an open source project that is just growing and just permeating. And you guys took it upon yourselves to like have this hackathon mentality about it. And now it's a, it's a thing. It's, I see it like an animal that's organic. And, and yes, you guys are working on it now, but tomorrow someone can grab that code and build more on it. What, what is the future of all of this? This is amazing. What do you guys think of it? Like, where do you guys see this going? I think that is fantastic. And I was asked one time by another dev who is, is actually working on another Pong server marketplace on Darrow. And he goes, oh, you guys are already there. I'm only here. What do you think? I go, continue more. That's more awesome. competition is better. I mean, the whole point of decentralization is it's open for everyone to take and use. It's not decentralized one source where we have to have everything to ourselves. The point is to grow tree market outwards and then really in 2025 if everything goes as planned we want to create a version where you can download it install it on your own server and run your own instance with your own customizations so think wordpress style where you could take this open source code modify it any way you want and then have your own online store or online blog and think of it in in the sense that it's open to almost anything at that point that's incredible. Like, okay, so what's your GitHub so people can uh, learn more about it? And if there are any creators out there that they can come and co-create this, this spontaneous uh, order uh, invention that you guys are part of, this is incredible. What's uh, the GitHub called? Thanks, uh, Apollo. <laughs> I think it's Tree Dash Market, isn't it, guys? That's so cool. Yes, it is. I read is confirming here. And you know that that is a, a big part of it. You know, we we don't want we want the new civilization to be a civilization in which everybody has the liberty of do whatever they have be, you know, came here to do uh without any restrictions. Only, you know, supporting the non-aggression principle, which is the basic one. So we, that is the idea of tree market to take our civilization or help our civilization, you know, in this transition that we are going through and do it through technology and making a statement in each step of the way. So we took so much time, you know, to be perfect with, your, with our words, as the four agreements say, uh, you know, like the, the, the amount of work that we put in the, pay, in the web pages that are there in tree.market. Um, are, you know, a statement in themselves. And that is, you know, the spirit that we want to give to the whole movement. So that is why, you know, the, the open source part is so important to make this unstoppable. You know, what, something that I, I find fascinating with you guys is, is that you guys have a, a, an abundance mindset and that you guys don't seek to, like, covet. Um, well, let me ask you something. Is there any intellectual property built into anything that you guys are building? Red? I mean, at the moment, there is intellectual property, but what is property at that sense? If someone can just take a code, modify it themselves and publish it and it makes it different, it kind of defeats the purpose of this sharing open free world. So I mean, I was asked with open another source, open source. Yeah, yeah, 100 percent. Copy. Okay, yeah, that's what I mean. OK, sorry. So you were saying, pardon me? I, I don't remember. What oh, yeah. <laughs> no worries. We lost That's the it. notion we of this it. open source. You're saying this, the notion of this open source ethos. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole idea is to create something because when you centralize, what you have is a big target in the back of whoever is centralizing, right? Yes. And uh, that is, is a problem in the world that we want to create for sure. Uh, so what uh, the, the ethos behind is decentralization to a point in which we are seeding something, right? And then we don't know what is coming later. 
we are just working creating the the ecosystem you know it's like creating how you call the hoses for the for the fire firemen fire a fire hose fire hose thank you it's like building a fire hose right that is what we are doing and then people can come you know do whatever they want with it but we have a base to start from and yes that is a, from an abundance mindset absolutely I love it. I'm like just listening to you guys and I'm like just swimming in it. Like I love this. I so love this. And thanks so much, man. Yeah, let me well next next question would be like what what is uh like what do you, what drives you guys to do this? Like what is uh, what what how do you guys uh yeah, what drives you guys? I will leave this one first to Apollo and then we we can chip in. But Apollo, you want to go? What drives me? What drives you guys to be doing this as a gift to the world? I don't know. I mean, just look around. I mean, <laughs> what else am I going to do? <laughs> to me, it's just like when I see a problem, I want to fix it. And I see a lot of problems. And I think that this can fix a lot of problems. Uh, you know, like I talked to you before in uh, Nonsensus about private islands. It was really the truckers that got me on that train. But yeah, like was mentioned earlier in this conversation, CBDCs, lots of stuff on the horizon that uh, we just gotta we gotta build back better, guys. You know? No, no, just build back <laughs> right. <laughs> you're just trying to steal their meme. I love that. <laughs> yeah, screw their meme. Uh, yeah, what a deceptive meme. So, okay, yeah. guys. Um, I, I can chip in with one thing there. Um, sure. You know, this has a deep meaning, at least for me. Red here, you can sure. say the same, I guess. Um, this is a project that, you know, this is all uh, working free now, okay? 12 to 16 hours a day. No problemo. This is a mission, you know? And I'm more worried nowadays in fulfilling my mission than in, you know, having this nine to five or something like that, you know? Uh, so that is what moves me. And I believe as Apollo that there's a clear problem that we have. And I mean, all of us, not uh, only the people on Nindero, in blockchain. No, no, no. We all have a problem. So better get our ass moving and start working. Red, anything to add? I mean, I, I resonate with both of what Renaissance Man and Apollo said. It's uh, we have a mission, we have purpose to actually make a change in this world, and we have opportunity to do it. We have the skill sets, the know-how, the right team in place to be so cohesive that the we said this before, the world is on this precipice where it can go either way. And I see it as whenever there's a stressor in one direction with this quote-unquote dark or evil energy, there's going to be this bright light energy that's going to balance it so whoever picks up that flag and runs with it great for them and something else about that it's really just creating something for everyone else for us yeah we're, we're going to put in the work and hopefully things are, are amazing but for the world to be free and to get away from this tyrannical system that we're in that's really what motivates us fantastic do you guys have uh, an idea of how to penetrate the market even more with these technologies, with this technology itself, which gives complete sovereignty to anyone who engages with commerce from the point of sale that you created? Is there is there a a a, a point um a two market strategy, or are you guys just open to everyone coming in and contributing and taking this to to the next level in the way they see fit? How is this How is this going to work? Well, what I can tell you is that we have a roadmap in the web page that everybody can check what are the plans uh, from now to the seed launch, which is happening on April 7th. So if you want to be updated about that, please go to tree.market and get in the sign in, sign in, sign in, right? Sign up, sign up, sign up. Yes, form. And um, the idea is to, as soon as we finish the seed, the, the seed funding, 
With that, we are going to start working in actually, as I said, you know, develop the MVP that is going to be the closed beta first. That closed beta has more or less 12 weeks, we said, more or less. Weeks. And that will be uh, in tested in small communities. So what we are looking for to test in, for example, farmers markets you know, uh, food producers that have their own community, you know, and they want to sell without having any intervention. So that is going to be the point of trade solution that we will start with. So people can trade in the moment, right? And I send you an invoice and you get, it's like, imagine that you want to buy raw milk, a crime nowadays, right? So you come, I, you, I, I create an invoice for you with Tree Market, and you pay in whatever a crypto you want. No problem in the moment. That takes more or less two and a half minutes, according to our, our measurements now. So yeah, wow. that is the first thing to test in small communities. And then as we grow from that, we want to start hitting small kiosks, independent contractors, things like that. I have friends in the town I'm in, <clears throat> excuse me, that have their own restaurant and they can have their own kiosk or their own massage service. So we want to get them to be able to use it. Because again, as I, I want to emphasize, we're creating this as well for usability for Grox and grannies and everyone in between. So if the, my friends can start using it here in this town, this person who owns a restaurant that doesn't know much about crypto, then I think we've really been successful in providing a product that will be utilized in the masses. And that will bring in more people. One of the issues with crypto is it's not user-friendly right now. So that's something we're trying to change. Apollo, anything that you wanted to add there? Uh, no, but one thing I do want to say no, should I? Yeah, I just it's been ringing in my ears since you mentioned public uh, view keys. I feel like someone's going to get mad at me if I don't say that Darrow doesn't have public view keys, but it has Darrow proofs. Maybe it's a technical quibble, but I just have to say it. Okay, great. So something um, comes to me, which you know begs to ask: Do you guys see this becoming the standard proof of a point of sale system for? the entire crypto industry because why not why wouldn't you want the best privacy as point of sale for any cryptocurrency that is open oh, source. absolutely we we do want it to be that that's why we want to want to incorporate nine different cryptos to start and it's going to be a point of trade for not just crypto i hope even more if things move for further with our plans maybe we can incorporate the users paypal stripe venmo all of those other ways that people interact there's not just one way and as the world does the world gives us all of these opportunities and tools why not take advantage of them where you can yeah, the the I, I have to say the payment systems that has been uh, described here is very very important for us, and we have been you know trying to see how much we can go with this, uh, but uh, for now for the launch you know is still TBD. To be determined how we can incorporate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, I because you know the the point is that now with crypto we know what we can achieve and we are pointing out to the community that already knows the importance of this. So, if okay, so we get the traction here, we can start uh, you know, th th that is what I was saying about the roadmap. You know, we, we are a really small team and the idea is to achieve small milestones but important ones. How do you guys compare to a BTC pay server? I, like, Apollo? I don't know. It's just like a point of sale for Bitcoin for BTC. And I think Monero, they also incorporated Monero. Um, I, I, as far as I can tell, from my perspective, you so guys it's just are a, an actual it wallet. On you guys BTC. are a wallet. You guys are a it wallet. It focuses on BTC and, and Dara. Well, with we are not a wallet. We harness the power of your own wallets. Mm -hmm. So when you add your Bitcoin address and your Bitcoin information into our platform, all we're doing is we're we're viewing the public key. I think that is Apollo can correct me and apologies. And thank you for correcting me before, Apollo. I'll, I'll add that now. Um, but what happens is 
on the service, we just kind of look with listeners to that address to make sure that the transaction that we have on our records is matches. And then from there, the transaction gets validated in an invoice. And again, I could be speaking out of line. I would rather prefer Apollo speaks about this since it is his specialty. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how BTC Pay works. I've actually used it, but I don't know their technical backend. But I think what we're doing is, I, I, I think it's pretty different. I mean, like they're saying, it, your data is in your wallet, uh, so you own it, and you can have your, you know, your store basically is in your wallet, your, your listings, your products, uh, as well as your ledger of all your sales, and all that is, is data that you own. I don't know what BTC Pay does. I don't think that you can have listings with them. Can you? Can you start a store with BTC Pay? See, that's where you guys are different. Uh, the BTC Pay server is a just the, the transaction itself. It provides access to the transaction itself, but it's not the store front that you guys provide for people. In a sense, you guys are like a Shopify too on your wall, uh, like, that's what's 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 exactly Shopify, WordPress, Wix, and then add on the Amazon style when we do the marketplace. The idea is to start with Shopify style, a WordPress style. That's kind of where I describe it. And then we want to open up and allow everyone with their own personal catalog. Like Apollo said, it's in your own wallet, it's your information, but now you want to publish it on this platform that we created. Well, here you go. Guys, the key point there I want to raise is the reputation yes. that you'll have as well. Oh, that's awesome. So we're, you we're want to go have further to... into that, Apollo? Uh, you want to tell us? You, you brought yeah. it up. You might as well continue. Yeah, keep going. What's up? Well, I just think it's a very important part in a, in a free market, especially when you have anonymous people online to have some form of reputation. And so, of course, we've got that in the works. And I think it's just going to be a really integral part of the whole ecosystem. You'll be able to see who is trusted without knowing you know, where they live without anyone knowing where they live, but you'll be able to see, you know, if they are reputable. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I mean needs to be said is, is that um, privacy is by default. If someone wants to be open and compliant with their jurisdiction, they can do that as well. But this actually, this is actually the smart way to build, in my opinion, because it keeps the business owner from being susceptible to voyeurism and 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 i think this is uh this is the intelligent way of building not you know you build a an outhouse or 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 porta potty you don't make it out of glass or plexiglass right you you have privacy by default right so it's it's just this is the smart way to build and it's just that we we have a culture that thinks privacy by default is not ethical for some reason but in reality to be completely honest, it is the ethical way to build. So I appreciate it a lot. You know that you know you, you you're really the owner of your data, and and what you your commerce is something that you get to keep the, the 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 fullness of what's yours yours, and you share it voluntarily. Which I find beautiful, right? Like no one can just enter into my house without my permission. Heck, not even the government without a warrant. So it's it's a uh, it's beautiful to have this in the area of, of technology, which is something that uh, I, I think this world is hungry for. Absolutely. Uh, you wanted Why to say something? Okay. Just you, just wanted yes. to add one thing there, Raf. Um, okay. You know the the point of the reputation being on chain, you know, and being yes. uh, like an asset of yours. For me, that is a very, very important thing because nowadays, you know, if you want to demonstrate, let's assume that you don't have anything, okay? You lost everything, you know, a problem, okay? And you want to start, like, for example, making yourself a name in the neighborhood where you live. So with right. this, you can actually ask people, you know, you serve people with things, you know, your gifts to the world. And then the people can tell this is a good person, so to speak. He gives a good service. And we encourage that to be done in each transaction, even in offline transactions. So basically, you can create a reputation of your own and keep it in your in your own wallet. 
Hmm. Yeah, while riffing, I also want to just say it's not include. It's not limited to tree market. Like it's really you. It's your reputation that you can take to other platforms. Um, so yeah, I think that's very valuable. Within Darrow. Correct. Reputation. Otherwise, you would need some. Well, you would need something that could see Darrow at least. But yeah, that's amazing. That's incredible. All right, guys. Well, everyone wants to see it. Is there a way you guys can screen share so we can see it? Was this something sure. you guys prepared for? Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Can you guys give us a quick demo? We are thinking here if uh, you, uh, Apollo, you have the, the app ready or shall we go with the prototype? Are you there? Oh, sorry, I was I was muted. Go to the, go with the prototype, please. All right, let's do that. Hey, let me double check. Can you share your screen or um, let me make sure? Yeah, let's try. No, you yeah. need to give me permission. Good. Very exciting. Here, all right. When you tell me, Raf, no problem. All right, guys, I think it's ready. All right, let's try. There we go. I yes. have permission. Yes, awesome. Coming to you. Let me know awesome. when you can see it. I can see it. Let's do it. Tree Fantastic. Market, nice. Let's get the glasses on. So what you're going to see here is uh, the the feed. The this is you know the the page that will welcome you when you get into Tree Market. In this case, we are talking here about a clothing store that in my case, I'm Pedro. This is my point of trade. And you can see that I have, first of all, my monthly performance, both in sales and in satisfaction. So I can see the reputation reflected here. Nice. Everything again is uh, in your own wallet. This is just picking up those data, those data points and point, putting them out in a nice way. That's it. No nice. spying there. You can see here that you have several different categories. This will be to filter all the different things that are coming to you, you know, in the feed. And in this case, you can see that we have an invoice here, an invoice here, a bounty. We will talk about more about that more later. On the top, you can see the reputation here. Sorry for that. Here we go. So you can see the reputation up there. Very important. You keep an eye on that at all times. Nice. Now, let's assume that you, Raf, come to my store and I will sell you something. So I will just create an invoice by clicking here. By the way, this what you're seeing here, you will be able to execute in your cell phone, in your tablet, no matter the brand. As soon as as if it is can if it is able to run an instance of Brave, you will be able to to use it. No browser. problem. Uh-huh, in the browser exactly. Nice. So here we have a empty invoice. I will start now. And I will, you, you like this uh, shirt, so I will just add it. This is my catalog, by the way. You can see here that I have only two products. And I will just click here to add it. Nice. All right. So I will add it now. And basically, you, you came here. Give me one second. I will try to make a correction here to, to make it look better. There it is. That is a lot better. Excellent. So... We see the uh, button-up shirt that is added to the to the invoice here, and you see this sombrero that I have here, you know, uh, and you like it. All right, so let's add that sombrero, but cl clearly I don't have it in the catalog. So what I will do is to tap here in custom and just add the custom item. You can see the name. I added no category, quantity, price, and then I can tap here to add this item to my catalog because I already entered all the details. So yeah, let's do that. I will just add it. There it is. And it has been added to the catalog too. Now up to the checkout. Any questions so far, Raf? Everything no, good? No, it looks amazing. It's so streamlined, uh, self-explanatory. I'm good. Yeah, it's great. Fantastic. Thanks a lot. 
So now we are in the checkout process. Uh, we can see the summary here and we can see add-ons. And this is where everything, the magic happens in tree market. So the add-ons are different add-ons, different uh, things that you can load up in your account, uh, in your membership account. And what you get is, you know, things that make this more useful for your particular use case. But we also have add-ons like more broadly um, used that can be, for example, the reviews that you can see here. So what we are doing is to encourage the reviews to be done between users by what? By offering the selling part or the offering part to lock a little bit of a percentage of the invoice into escrow. So if the other party completes the bounty, basically rates you and leave you a comment, you will give them a cashback review. So that, you know, is beautiful because it works like as an incentive for the people to take time and actually give you a good review. And for you, it's great because basically you can, we will probably change the amount here. We will allow the users to change the amount of the rebate that they want to give. But the idea is to explain the mechanism. Is, is this clear for you, Raf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty clear. Yes, yes, yes. Like it's, it's very, it's, it's more intuitive than your explanation. Yeah. You explain uh, more than yeah. you, <laughs> you don't have to explain so much. It's That's very intuitive. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So Ralph. I think you did yes, a great yes. you guys did a great job because it's very intuitive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, and then the, you know, for example, this is another add-on in which you as the the seller can choose to donate a little bit uh, for the development of the platform. So you get a summary of the total uh the total cost of the add-ons. You get the network fees that are, you know, again, uh, totally like not perceivable at all. And the, the ability to split payment in case that you need it. That is very useful for environments like a cafe or something like that. Cool. So I will now proceed to the payment. And here the idea is that we will have more than Dero and more than cash to accept. And you can basically choose whatever you want. Nice. Now... The idea is that we, we are changing a bit this part for the launch of the seed token. So you will see a more streamlined and nicer, um, nicer interface here. But the idea is that by this point, the user, the, 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 the buyer has to go and actually make the deposit to you. And in that case, when that is received, you will get the confirmation. Again, Beautiful. this is going wow. to change, guys, okay? This is going to change. Don't want this to be the, the final statement here. But yeah, that's it. Dude, that's incredible. Congratulations, guys. Woo! This is awesome. Whoa, thanks a lot. So here, I just wanted to add one more thing, a little bit of a glimpse of the future. So I, we were been talking about, you know, the uh, Amazon killer. And this is what the three marketplace is going to be. So... I will tap here just to show you a little bit what we have in mind, but this is going to be a totally decentralized uh, Etsy or Amazon or whatever you want to call it. And we will allow everybody to just, you know, we one tap, basically publish their listings to the whole world. So potentially mm -hmm. reaching billions of people. Imagine the impact of that. That's incredible, dude. We hope to get your uh, support for these uh, guys. I'm talking about your audience. Thanks a lot for being there so far. <laughs> it's, it's really um, jaw dropping, you know, because you you have to realize that like it's a complete private. It's complete privacy, and the cost effective. The, it's so cost efficient. Yeah, and you can use this as a point of sale for anything. As anything, and as soon as we launch the what what uh, Red was saying about the um, the ability to install your own instance, to run your own instance, there are going to be you know I don't know if you ever heard of Popcorn Time, but this yeah. was a platform that leveraged uh, BitTorrent. So yes, imagine that happening, you know. Um, we probably have nothing to do by then, you know, the, because the people will be able to do that in their own servers. I see and what you're saying. Cool that wow, point, that's incredible. I... So you can put the uh, 
you can put a torrent service alongside with this and people can pay for torrent services through this. Wow. That's, exactly. Wow. So you'll be able to have a private product, so to speak, where you give them the... A membership, right? A membership where you have like a... Uh, let's assume that you like a lot, you know, 20s movies, right? And you have this whole collection, impossible to get in other places. So you just want to, you know, uh, charge a little bit, uh, like a little do per month for people to access that. And you will be able to do it when we open source this finally to the, like, uh, the, the server, right? Well, Version yeah, when we create it. that op or that version where you can create your own instance. And from there, I also see another economy growing where people start creating side apps, kind of like Shopify and Word, WordPress, that whole side ecosystem of theme developers, app developers, plugin developers, all of these other things that have created this new world for people to make money or, or to actually make revenue and do trade, it's going to hopefully branch off in that way. At least that's one of my visions, our visions, excuse yeah. me. Apollo, so what do, you, do I have anything there, brother? Sorry, I was talking too much, Rav. No, no, you're <laughs> good. You guys are good. Happen. You guys are good. I think Apollo is fine. Yes. Yeah, I'm just so happy to be working with you guys because it's, as you just saw, the UX, the UI is, is so beautiful. And so to marry that with my... Uh, expert backend skills i mean it's just it's just a rocket you know i'm just really excited to be to be on this rocket can, can i please make a uh can I, I i would like to make a request um dark mode please <laughs> like yes i promise we will have dark mode yes thank exactly. you so Go much yes appreciate it well, dark mode is a path to success and to virality in my opinion when um, we launch it the dark mode can we come back yeah of course heck yeah yes of course dark mode is the path back to tcv yes excellent um, yes dark mode is 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 all i care for in life so um and by dark mode guys i'm talking about the screens okay so don't, don't get conspiratorial okay um let's <laughs> no, that was a great joke man <laughs> i mean whatever if you you understood it. You understood it. But let, let's let's talk about. But if anyone wants to collaborate with Tree Market, um, is that something where would people be working with you guys directly, or would it be something uh, that you guys just uh, have your team, and uh, would just be what you guys will welcome any commit to the GitHub? Um, what, what would be the process to for for anyone out there that says, you know what, dude, I. I have a vision and I want to do what they're doing, but a little different or add on something to this whole ecosystem of private by default uh, point of sales. Well, the best way to do that, it would be to go into tree.market uh, and in the website, we have this form. And in the form, we have this um, section that is about um, if you want to collaborate with the project. Mm. And what we ask there is that you tell us about what is really your own mission, what are the things that uh, matter most to you, and what you bring to the table uh, how many you know how many hours like basic things but very important for the people that wants to knock on the door that understand that this is not like another job in the tech industry this is a mission as i said this is not for the faint-hearted if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah no, this is beautiful guys like I, I worked in wall street for a hot second and right away i was like i gotta get out of here these are not my people they don't understand bitcoin they don't understand crypto they don't see that this is like a do or die for humanity and these and they just weren't motivated they didn't understand what this aspect of that is so important to me so i want you guys to know that you guys have um our full support that we love what you guys are doing that this is wonderful that the world needs this and that we highly champion these types of technologies because um if if we don't if we don't not only if we don't use these technologies, we are we would be we would be hurting. You know, I actually would like to make um and again guys at, at here in this channel, the crypto vigilante, we never do any type of affiliate marketing or anything like that. So everything that we do is 
every if I have any any entrepreneurial endeavor here on the on the show, it's because I I it's I'm genuinely curious about it, right? So, but that means that and 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 I have no affiliation with it whatsoever. I just do it for the passion of open source technology and and to push it forward even more. For many years before Bitcoin came out, I was really passionate about open source back then, but there were never the market drivers to actually create the economic incentives for entrepreneurs to build on top of what, you know, um, of the open source sex that, that existed. It was just more like a, we do it because we like it, a vibe. But here we have the economic incentive to actually take these technologies to the next level and to grow them. So, you know, what would be really cool is to see everyone that is watching this show to just, um, is this ready to be downloaded? Is this ready to be used by people? I mean, again, if people know how to code and want to start taking it and building it themselves, they can. For the general user, it's a bit more difficult right now just because like <laughs> Renaissance Man said, as we sat in a room for 20 hours or a weekend and coded this thing. So it's, you know, it's rough around the edges. Let's just say that. Yeah, so it's literally it an right? alpha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys Excuse are me? an alpha. You guys yes. are an alpha. Okay, cool. So when yes. will it be ready for the masses to plug and play? We we expect for the masses to do peer-to-peer -peer trades, not for the worldwide tree marketplace yet, but just for people to use it as a point of trade system. We are hoping for August of this year, if the funding goes as well as we Yeah, hope. that is where we will help. We need all the help that we can get. That is very important. If we, I mean, we did this because we we thought, okay, if the people believe in the vision, you know, and they want this to happen in the world, okay, they will help fund it, uh, you know, and trust us, you know, with the seed token uh, launch. Now, okay. if that doesn't happen, that means clearly that we were too, you know, like a, a positive, uh, like, you know, like, a yeah. But I expect that many, many people join us, honestly, because as we say, you know, this is needed. We need this. Yeah. And we really want to put our heads down for the next 12 to 16 weeks and create this for the world. So to not have to think about anything else, that's kind of why we chose this route to crowdsource it, to not have anyone else to to really interfere in that. And we have a vision. We have a mission. You can see we have the layout of how we want it to look in general. And so that's really why we're looking for the support and to to just accomplish this in as quick a time as possible. Yeah. Cool. Apollo, anything else to add there? Awesome. Well, I wasn't going to say it, but I I think that uh, the time frame is. <laughs> I'm always I'm I'm always too optimistic with time frames, so I I won't say anything. Okay. Um. The, the thing that is, is that, that, that is good. That, that is good. In, good. in Apollo language, that is good yes. for what I know. Just to give you a funny <laughs> anecdote about that, when we first chatted to Apollo about this idea, we had these wireframes of the screenshots that you guys all just saw, and we showed it to him, and Renaissance Man goes, hey, you wanted me to snack Acapulco? He's like, yeah, for sure. That's amazing. He goes, okay, how long do you think it'll take to make this? He goes, he pauses for a moment. And he strokes his chin. He goes, well, about 20 hours. And we all laugh. We did it in about 20 hours. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Um, and, and, you know, the most beautiful thing about this that the, that the audience needs to know about is, is that um, when you build something like this that is open source, you're setting the ground floor for there to be ever more freedom in the future. So, you know, it, it makes, in my opinion, it makes no sense to strive to have a lot of money if you're not also striving to have a lot of freedom because you could have a lot of money and a lot of means but if tomorrow we wake up in a ho horrible dystopia a technocratic state that you can't you know do away with and it's a, a horrible black mirror nightmare after nightmare it's not gonna you know we're all gonna be in the same boat and and you're gonna be and you're gonna be looking at you know, times like this, asking yourself, hey, if I could have done something, why didn't I do something? So for any, everyone watching, you know, I think it's, it's you know, it's obvious that it's game time that we all support open source technology that is uh, that aims at privacy as much as possible. 
because otherwise, you know, um, all of your friends and family are really going to be suffering in the future. And I'm just being honest. Um, unless you're ready Absolutely. to really go Amish, unless you're ready to really go Amish with a community and be pretty and be ready to unfortunately have to maybe def defend yourself from tyrants because, you know, I hate to talk like this, but it has to be said because these privacy tools are really ways to the you know push tyranny away and to say look we will play ball we will play within the constructs of 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 the world as is just don't be abusive because we have a way to leave and 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 it's important to put that message out there and know that the more legos that we build the more we will be able to build and these things will compound exponentially to the point that um, there will be entrepreneurs deploying cool stuff like this. And I'm seeing it right now with technology that is not private by default. The P their entrepreneurs are going to be deploying using this these libraries on a daily basis because I am seeing it right now. I'm telling you, it. this is the reality that I'm seeing right now, but not with technology like Daryl that is private by default because Daryl's so new. So for you, for, for people to support this is something that is... Um, it's it's a, it's not just an act of uh, of act. It's not just a form of activism, but it's a, a form of profit seeking in a world that is ever more tyrannical. And I really love the fact that Daryl exists because, you know, the privacy coin, the privacy network with Daryl is not just a place where you store wealth or use it as a medium of exchange, unit of account, but it's a it's a place where you create wealth. And you not just create wealth on chain as products that you can monetize and gamify, but also uh, as means that you can gamify and use in the world so that you can engage the world with it, which is much privacy, you know, in real life as possible. And that's really what you guys are doing here. Absolutely. So, and I would yeah. add to that one important thing, Raf. Yes. So what uh, we have discovered after a long time, you know, trying to find a way to get out of the matrix, because as you say, right, we need to start moving into a right direction, like into the right direction, yes. right? For us, we cannot keep giving our money away to banks. We cannot, uh, you know, wait until the, you know, central bank of your country ends up breaking you were back right? right so to say it, <laughs> to say it lightly uh so the the idea here is that we are championing this um way of creating organizations that is under the a PMA agreements that is a private membership association and this is something that we really want to champion and share with everybody because in this way you can start organizing and under another jurisdiction so this is super important for all the people that is listening now that start checking that out how to establish their own private mem membership associations with their friends you know their community because this shields you a uh, of the system basically it gives you access to another jurisdiction that is called equity and it's very important that people go deep into this we are as i said you know if you go into the footer of the website you can see part of this there and you will be able to get a, a better glimpse of what we are we are doing here but yeah i, I totally agree that the way is out <laughs> so can you explain to those watching that are new to this concept what's a private membership agreement and how does it work Essentially, it's just a contract between two people that are two living, embodying humans that don't need to identify as the state-controlled entities that they would they associate as in contracts. So, if you and I, Raf, want to sign a contract privately and then do uh, types of trades in the private without anyone watching we can and this kind of all started during prohibition in i think the 1913s i could be wrong on the date but around that time so people signed private members agreements so they can then go inside this private club and then drink and do other things without anyone being able to come in and that's being taken up again in a much bigger stance nowadays where 
we are declaring our sovereignty as humans. And by doing so, we don't need anyone to tell us who we can and cannot interact with and sign a contract with. So by doing so in the private, we literally, as Renaissance Man said, is we go into a different jurisdiction. We are no longer under the jurisdiction of the so-called matrix system. And this allows us to be free again and be humans as we should be under natural law. I mean, I cool. I mean, I like that and all. I, I'm, I'm, I was always free, so sounds good. <laughs> we are, we are always free. The thing is, the system put us into this matrix. I don't know if you've seen the Jones Plantation movie. However, it's a really good representation of how the matrix system is built, and almost how the animal farm keeps us all involved. And through that process, it's escaping that farm or that slavery mindset into self-sovereignty and not relying on governments or anything to right. intermediate or help you. It's it's taking taking actions for yourself. Uh, there's a nice analogy that I like to do here, Raf, that is if you think about this in terms of the matrix is that you take no pills. You are not taking any option. You're just walking away. And where can and people learn a, more? That's awesome. And wh where can people yeah, yeah, learn yeah. more about this? I don't want to take any pills. Where can people go and <laughs> not take any well, pills? Well, you can start by signing up in tree.market. We have the sign up form there. And we will probably will be sharing more about this. Uh, another thing that you can do is just search in internet for the private membership association, how to build one. Um, and you will be taken to this deep wormhole yeah. in the sovereignty movement and taking back control of your person and no longer being a corporation underneath the state system. It goes very, very deep and complex. And even when talking to you know, lawyers about how the system works. They're like, whoa, I, I never even thought that. <laughs> so the whole web and how it's been obfuscated towards us is a rabbit hole that is there for whoever wants to dive down it. Yeah. Uh, Apollo, you want to say something here, brother? Well, I'm new to the private membership association stuff, but uh, it's all very intriguing and exciting to me. And I also want to say earlier, Raf, what you were saying was very beautifully said um, when you were just talking about the uh, the kind of fork that we're at in the road here. And but I'm actually very optimistic, you know, and, and partly because I'm part of this project. I'm I'm extremely optimistic, guys. You guys have no idea. As I told you, I was just hanging out. Um, I was just hanging out with uh, your competition which is really the younger generation of crypto that really finds itself in like Solana and Ethereum. And well, actually, wait, before I say that, um, Darrow is very young. Like I actually got teary when I went to Nonsenses because everybody was so young. I, I, I was expecting these all these old cypherpunk guys trying to redeem themselves and everyone is super young. And so... Darrow's a young network, and I see other networks that are very young, like Solana, and Ethereum attracts a lot of youth. Ordinals on BTC attracts a lot of youth, and what and what I and I, what I started noticing is is that um, there is a so let me break it down this way, right? So there is the world of people in crypto like myself that came in and kind of like paved the way, but once we paved the way, it took a lot of energy and effort from us. We moved these boulders out of the way. The younger crowd is just walking in and they just get to enjoy themselves and create. So uh, that makes me extremely hopeful because they come with a completely different paradigm when they're not, they're not, they're, they look at the dollar world, the fiat world, and they look at the crypto, crypto world and they step back because they, they, they were, they see both. They were born into both and they see the crypto world, the fiat world, they see the fiat boomer world and they make fun of it. They're like, this is ridiculous. And they don't have a seriousness about it. I'll give you guys an example, okay? I wish I had my, my NFTs around here. I feel like jumping out and grabbing something for you guys. Can you give me one second? Here, let me go. I'll be right, one second. Let me show you the difference. Let me show you guys the difference. 
Th these are any, like physical NFTs that you have there. Oh, what a suspense. I like this. What do you think he is going to bring, Apollo? Let's make some bets. You guys ready? I'm imagining a pillow for some reason. A pillow. All right. <laughs> so check this out, guys. Go. So we have the dollar, right? We have the dollar. The dollar is like, you know, to be part of that dollar world is like disgusting because you have to, if you want to go into it, you literally have to so sell your soul. And they tell you that the way to grow in that world is, is by... Um, you know, playing around along with this system that is very serious. You got to go to school. You got to wear a tie. You got to be all serious, right? And the counterculture to that was also very serious. What was the counterculture to that? Monero. Monero is a manifestation. And look how serious it is, right? It's still very, it looks very anonymous, right? Bitcoin was also, but it's, Bitcoin also frames itself within, within a, a world that is very, I would say serious because Bitcoin also says, you know what? Um, we are we are in relation to. So it's always comparing the Bitcoin world to fiat, the Bitcoin to, world to fiat. Does that make sense? There is that yeah. point of inflection where they have to mirror. They, they they have to look at each other to dialogue. And Darrow is like, look, it's even a a bigger reflection of what fiat is not. Correct. So, Absolutely. So you have the youth coming into crypto, which is now sees the dichotomy between crypto and the fiat world. And they realize these young people just realize that in school, they're teaching them bullshit. That is just dumb. So they now know because we paved the way in crypto. They now know that it is possible because we did it. We gave the world Bitcoin. We gave the world Ethereum. Bitcoin Ethereum. We gave them this these new alternatives. So now they come in with fresh energy, highly intelligent, and they just look around and they see that even we were serious because we were we were we, we were fighting the like the first battle and they don't have to fight anymore. They they can just walk in. And when they're walking in, you know, this is the vibe they're bringing. They're bringing fun. Yeah. You see what I mean? So like it's the, the it's a reflection of the complete opposite of the com the reflection of the complete opposite of the seriousness of of um the seriousness of the situation of the Federal Reserve versus Bitcoin fiat versus crypto uh the need to have you know the seriousness of something like Guy Fox and now people the, the youth are just coming in with with yeah, very, it's about how you take it, right? How they're how coming you... in with a, a fresh perspective, and that gives me so much hope because now they get to play, and it's almost like you have seen the movie uh, Game of uh, Game of Thrones, where the whole door is holding the door, you know, hold door, right? Hold the door, right? And all the kids run in, right? And they get saved. Well, we've been holding the door. The kids already ran in, and they're having fun. So all we have to do is let go of the door and get in and have fun. We already did our part. So. The world of crypto is now moving to a place of a lot of fun because fiat has been defeated. That's what I'm trying to say. Fiat has been defeated and we can really have fun now. So I look well, forward to, <laughs> yeah, to the Daryl community. I think that, yeah, go on, go on, go on, Rob. No, no, I, uh, I, I look forward to the Daryl community really embracing that fun because the Daryl community is very much... A lot of it started off being serious, but now I'm seeing it become very fun. You see what I mean? Fun is going to be, you know what, when the taxes are no more. That is, I, I consider that a lot of fun, you know, because if we starve the beast, the beast dies by itself. And actually it's, you know, more, you, you don't even have to be no, nor serious, nor fun. You have to just say no to the system. You have to opt out. 
and then do your thing. And I think I rescued that what you said about the freshness here. So what we are doing here is to pave the way for people that produces pieces of art, like the one that you shown, to be able to do their own thing, right? To be fresh, to be however they want to be, but they need a channel to do that. And I believe that that is what we are trying to do so hard. That's well put. Thank you. Appreciate that. And, and it's like the fact that now we live, we're moving towards a world dominated by the creativity and the creative potential of every human being, where every human being can now bring their creativity into these networks. And with tree market, they have it private by default so that they can engage commerce, whether it be on chain or off chain in the most private way possible. And, and so I, I, one thing I, I don't know I, if you misspoke, but I, well, I would disagree with you from what I understood is like, I don't have to wait till the, 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 the beast is completely starved. I can just have fun in the process. You know, that's the way, that's my, the way I'm doing it. And I noticed that that's the way all the younger generation is doing it is, is that they, it's almost like every time they, they do like a meme coin, like right now, meme coins are really popular on, on, on Solana. Every time they do a meme okay. meme coin, like like Joe Bowden, right? It's like, it's like it's both in it's like a, it's fun and it's like a it's like an insult to the system. Like we're 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 so comfortable having fun that we don't even that we will take you down with Cheeto coin, with dog with hat, like you know what I mean? <laughs> with dog with hat is the way we're gonna bring down the Fed. It's like it's like dude. It's like these kids are like even more like people think NFTs and all these things are like oh they're just stupid. No no no, they're actually really smart because they bring like an aspect of creativity and fun, which not only uh which which in reality creativity and fun is is, is what um frees us from mental slavery. Um, Absolutely, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. And and fun fun is definitely something that lightens the spirit and humor. I think Apollo actually had something to say. I was actually going to make a confession just just between us guys here that uh, while I'm working on tree market uh, unpaid, you know, tirelessly, uh, I'm funding myself actually by every day I uh, I. I find a meme on Solana that makes me laugh and I, and I put money into it and then I put an auto sell for a two or three X and, uh, and yeah, that's, that's how I've been paying the bills this, this past few weeks. It's, uh, it's pretty retarded and it's pretty hilarious. I saw a tweet that was saying like, we got to get the most absurd meme coin to get to a high enough market cap that they're forced to say its name on uh, CNBC or whatever. And I, exactly. I think that's that exactly that spirit you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. It's, 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 it's inverting their matrix and it's now, so Bitcoin in itself and crypto mind fucks everyone. And the, and the real hack is not even an economic one. It's not even a technological one. It's a psychological one, but now it's like, we're torturing the system. How? With dog with hat, with Joe Bowden, with this Rexy, you see what I mean? And, and, and this is something, because this is the thing guys, is that everyone in crypto that is, of the first wave, first generation like me, we come indoctrinated with like, and have had to unschool ourselves with all the bullshit that comes from central planning, the state and the Federal Reserve. And money has always been this notion that we think of as something serious. It's not. And doesn't have to be. Who says it had to be something serious? No, it's money is energy. Right? Exactly. That's right. It's just a currency exchange and currency is just an energy exchange. So you have fun with it any way you want. We used to trade seashells and buttons back in the day and spices. So who's to say that we need pieces of paper to rule our lives? We don't. We have free expression. We can barter between each other. And that's what we really want to offer is the ability to do that again. Like, for example, look at, look at what the Monero community is doing, right? Like, look, at they're having fun in their own way as much as they can. They're sponsoring, like, 
soccer teams, basketball teams in South America, right? Yeah, the, the work of Alessandro is amazing. It's I, amazing. I have to thank you because I, I, I knew him thanks to you. So I, I have to say that that is the kind of ra grassroots work that we all need to do in our communities, right? And I know that you do this, you know, a lot in, in the crypto community. So that is a, a great, great uh, value that you bring, Raf, there. It's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. We need more. We need more. Yeah, I, I, I would love, look, guys, I'm honestly, since you guys, you guys have created like an environment and it's almost like I see you guys as like having created a, a vibe, a very healthy vibe, a very healthy environment. And I want to champion you guys to do this more. Because the energy that you guys bring is an energy that needs to be expressed to the world. So I'm even open, here open, to doing more of these with you guys. Because it is not enough to just have one conversation about this. The free and open source software ethos is something that needs to be communicated, that needs to be expressed, that needs to be put out there. And I, and I would like to, anytime you guys have a, a badass commit, or anytime you guys want to talk about something that is that regards this new world of on-chain uh, development that is private by default, we need to sit down and talk about it. We need to sit down and share about it because it is it is um, not enough for these technologies to exist out there without us actually communicating about it. Because by communicating about it is that we raise the awareness necessary for these to penetrate the market as they should. So I, I would really love to have you guys back so we can talk about this and, and maybe even figure out uh, what entrepreneurs are doing to take this even to the next level. Oh, fantastic idea. So a uh, quick question. So we, we don't have to deliver dark mode before, right? Can we come back before? As for, please deliver dark mode as soon as possible. There's a lot of people like Great. Me. Okay. Okay. You know, we like our <laughs> eyes at night, but... um. But yeah, definitely. Uh, whenever, like, let's just uh, let, you know this. This is a, the beginning of something that never ends, and that's a beautiful thing that the audience needs to understand. Then, when someone creates something that is on open source like this, they're creating something that they know will outlive them. Kind of like when Satoshi gave us Bitcoin. He gave us Bitcoin, and he knows that he will pass away, but Bitcoin will keep giving life. And so, I want to thank you guys for doing this because this is. Uh, very beautiful, very valuable uh, for all of us and and uh, everybody. It's tree market, tree dot market. Uh, play around with it. Give these guys feedback. Is there a place where people can give you guys feedback on all of this? Yes. Now we have a Discord that people can uh, log in. Uh, the link is also in tree dot market. You can get there through the website. And yes, the idea is that we are gathering there, uh, getting a lot of feedback of people. Uh, and we will be uh, anyways calling the first beta testers are going to be the ones that get the seed token. So that is very important to say that if you really want to see this vision projected in the world, we need you. Awesome, awesome. And, and all that information is on your website, right? Tree.market? Uh, to, for, yes, as absolutely. access to your Discord. Cool. Yeah, and, and we have links to the Discord and our other socials. You can find our GitHub link there. Sign up and give yep. us a job uh, or uh, talk about jobs. And, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if you want to submit your uh, interest for yeah, working you. together, we are going to be needing a lot of people. I'm not kidding. This is a large project and we need... If you are a UI, UX, if you are product designer, you are a developer, front-end, back-end, blockchain, come, please. If you have the mission, come. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Any last words of wisdom? Any last words of, of advice for anyone interested in your work? Apollo, you go first. Words of wisdom, that's a big ask. Um, I think just, you know, you said it so beautifully before, Raf. I think really like money is, uh, is not as important as freedom. And so, yeah, if this message resonates with you, if this project resonates with you, I think, yeah, go to treat out market and, uh, learn more. Right on, right on. 
I just wanted to say that I really appreciate this time together, Raf. I really enjoy your conversations, and this has been no uh, exception to that. Uh, yeah, invite everybody uh, to to join us wherever they want, and we will talk soon for sure. Thank awesome. you. And it, it really only happens when everyone starts to make action. And that's really what changes the world. People taking action. We can all say things, but if you don't do anything about it, it's not really going to move forward. So come join us on this mission. We hope you feel the same way and we look forward to seeing you on this path. All right. And, and one thing I will say is that I wish you guys were not anonymous because these dudes are freaking awesome, amazing people. And you, and I'm blessed to know you guys personally and and thank you so much for coming on the show tree market tree dot market peace love and peace now we are dealing with a possible world war some will say we are already in a world war my condolences and prayers go out to everyone suffering under tyranny it really sucks i'm really sorry but it seems as if people are starting to wake up regarding crypto more and more each day and so it's in the description right here to read where we give our secret sauce and what we teach our subscribers because things are just that bad you know everyone needs this information people need to know about sound cryptocurrencies that are actually private by default and to know how to properly use crypto 